All right, cool. Field trip day, Rosedale Tech. Right. Got Chris with me, Spence. Wow, Kenny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenny. Start over, start over. And, and Brandon. No, come on, you guys. I gotta learn new names all the time. So, uh, but yeah, we're at one of my garages doing a drivability job. Uh, this one's a no start on a Ford Taurus, and uh, you know we keep it real here at Rosedale Tech, right? Don't laugh. I'm serious, right? We're doing live work, live job, live garage. Let's make it happen. All right. So first thing, this is a no start. Uh, it does crank. I'll let you listen to it. Now one of the bad things that we're dealing with right now is a completely dead battery. We have a jump pack on here. I never like to do stuff like that. I like to have a good charge battery, but we'll deal with it. This is reality. No start. We're not sure what we're missing yet. We'll go spark, fuel, and uh, I think the next easiest step to do on this car because the coil packs up front is to pull one of the plug wires off, use a test light, see if we have spark. All right, of course there's some other directions we can go. We can put the scanner on it and check for trouble codes, look at RPM during cranking, but we're, we're gonna start here um, just because it's easy to do. Test light's connected to ground. Take one of the plug wires off and I'm gonna look at two things. One, to see if I have spark and two, to see how far it jumps. Um, this electrode is way down inside of here, so I don't expect it to jump too far out of the tower. If it jumps up to about that point right there, that's going to be about an inch gap, so it should jump to that. Go ahead and crank it. Okay. I definitely have spark. Um, not quite coming past this tower, but again, that, that metal electrode's way down inside there. So that spark is jumping between my finger and the test light uh, almost an inch. Uh, nice, a nice blue spark. Um, I'm gonna say we have spark on this engine. There'd really be no need for me to check all of them, although it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to check one of the other coils. There's three of them here. It'd be one, two, and three. I'll check one of the other ones just because. See if we got spark on that one too. Go ahead and crank it. Okay. All right, so we definitely have spark. The spark looks good. And so with that test, that tells me cam and crank signals are probably okay. I'm not worried about ignition inputs. I'm not worried about the computer uh, as far as spark control goes. Uh, I think the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go after fuel pressure. Okay, we have our fuel pressure gauge connected to the fuel rail, nice of Ford in the left-hand side of the screen to give us a Schrader valve to connect the gauge to. And uh, let's see what kind of pressure we have cranking. Okay, as you can see, we have no fuel pressure. So obviously that's gonna cause a no start. Before we uh, say this car needs a fuel pump, we need to check our powers and grounds. And uh, we're out in the parking lot here, so crawling underneath the car might not be the best thing or best idea to do. Um, so we're gonna try to do an amperage check up front under the hood on this pump, see if we can get it. If not, we're gonna have to crawl underneath and do it. A um, Little bit of history on the car. It ran fine when this owner parked it. It's been sitting for about three or four months and after sitting, the car does not start. There's some uh, simple tests that you can do uh, for you guys out there is you can actually uh, crawl underneath the car and beat on the fuel tank at this point. Um, sometimes when electric motors stick, uh, smacking on the tank will give you enough vibration that it'll get that pump up and running. So it might not be a bad idea to try it. And when you do this test, uh, you wanna do it while you're cranking. You want that circuit loaded. So uh, we can try that. I'll crawl underneath if you wanna crank it and I'll beat on the tank while we're watching that fuel pressure gauge. Hey, buddy. Hey. Nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. Yeah. Even jump. Okay. All right, so sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, so we're forced to do our powers and ground checks now. All right, so again, we're out in the parking lot. Um, I really don't want to crawl underneath this car yet, and what we're going to do next is we're going to go to the inertia switch. And this is on Fords. Uh, it's also Hyundai uses them too. On the cars, it's in the trunk area. And our inertia switch is on this passenger side area in the trunk. It's right there. And um, one of the things I gotta warn you about is uh, the wiring to these 
Sometimes they put these on the control side of the relay and sometimes they put them on the load side of the relay. So I want to do a power and ground check. I want to do an amperage check to the pump. But if that's the control side of the relay, that's not a complete test. I really need to be on the load side. So um, we're going to check a wiring diagram and make sure. And also while we're here, of course, the little red button on top, make sure that that's not tripped. You go back and just push on it and it's good. It's not tripped. We want to check it here. But again, we've got to check a wiring diagram, make sure we're on the load side of the circuit first. Okay, so we checked our diagram, and I'm glad we did. Something a little bit um, unanticipated with this car is this is a electronic returnless fuel system, which means that there is no fuel pressure regulator, that the computer controls the fuel pump uh, based on the speed of the electric motor, and it's gonna be done with a module. So in this system, this inertia switch does not feed directly to the fuel pump. It's actually on, on the input side of this control module. So operation's completely different on this design. On this one with just the key on, the fuel pump relay is energized all the time on this car. Uh, if you look at the diagram, the coil for the relay for the pump goes straight to ground. Power comes right from the power relay. So with the key on, on this design, both of those wires should be reading 12 volts or battery voltage, and that's the input to this fuel pump module. This fuel pump module, show that to you and where it's at. We had to do a little digging to find it. Um, it is in the, what they said in the wiring diagram on the right C pillar, and it's in the trunk area, and we had to move some stuff out of the way to, uh, to be able to see that, but that's the guy right there. And so the way this works is uh, the, the engine computer talks to this module and basically tells it what to do with the fuel pump. Uh, this module gets powered up through this inertia switch from the fuel pump relay. So that's kind of your input to this module to turn on. This system's definitely a little bit more complicated than the other ones. So starting with what we have here, we want to make sure our fuel pump relay is functional and that our inertia switch is good. And we've done that already, and we're showing battery voltage on both wires. I'll uh, put you down at the meter here in a second. Uh, we're gonna be checking this module for sure. But again, first step is to check this inertia switch. And we're gonna move this T-pin on both wires to make sure we got power coming in, power coming out. And I'll show you that on the meter. All right, so you, you can see on my voltmeter that we're showing 14.3 volts. We ended up having to put a battery charger on this car. Uh, it's really not a good idea uh, for diagnostic reasons. I've had issues with AC voltage from a completely dead battery using a wall charger really mess things up. So something we need to consider while we're going here, but uh, we really didn't have much of a choice. So I got 14.3, again, battery chargers on the car on that wire. Um, Spence, can you stand in front to shadow that sun? Stand right behind gotcha. the camera. There you go. And then uh, I'm going to move my T-pin to the other wire. And that's the other wire. So that's coming in and out of my inertia switch. So as, as you as you can see, our, our uh, feed from the relay to the inertia switch is good. We need to go down to this module now and do some checks. All right, I'm back here at the fuel pump driver module and uh, doing some wiring checks on this. Um, always check your meter. I'm on a different ground location. I'm gonna uh, do two things. One is I'm gonna check this meter ground and two, I'm gonna check my input from my inertia switch, which is this uh, pink with a black wire. I should have battery voltage on this circuit. If my ground is good on my meter and my input is good from the inertia switch, and you see on my meter, I'm reading 14.3 volts. Again, we have a battery charger on here, so our system voltage is high. So that one's good, moving on. Okay, so you understand operation of this driver module. What we have is uh, our white, our white with the red, which is right here, is our fuel pump power. And this should be hot all the time with the key on on this design. This module actually controls the pump ground on this black and pink wire. So it's a it's a pulsed ground uh, at certain times to control the pump speed. Again, no fuel pressure regulator. So this is a uh, controlled ground. During cranking, that voltage should be down near zero. Um, this black wire, heavy black, would be 
this modules ground, this would be all the current for the fuel pump, is gonna travel through that circuit, so we need to check that too. And then our two feedback wires would be these two from the PCM to the module. Um, this would be the, the signal, the green with the yellow is the control signal to tell the module what pressure to run the pump at, what speed, and then I believe the blue with a orange tracer is a feedback for fault. Okay, so the next circuit we're doing is the fuel pump feed, and that is uh, a white with a red tracer. T-pin that one. This one should be hot all the time. Look at my meter again, we got battery voltage, and that looks good. So this module is supplying the power to the pump. Uh, next one is going to be the pump ground. Our pump ground is our pink, black with a pink tracer, which is this one. And on our black and pink, you see we got battery voltage, near battery voltage, which is what I expected to see with the key on engine off. And uh, what's gonna happen when we crank this over, if this module is doing what it's supposed to be doing, is it should be grounding this circuit out. Can you go ahead and crank that for me? All right, and you see a ground was applied to this circuit. Okay, good. Key is still on? Okay, our ground was, was applied to this circuit and we still have no fuel pressure, so this pump was supplied a power and a ground. Uh, the interesting part right now is with the key on engine off, this should have returned back to battery voltage. And so what this looks like to me is that the pump itself has an open in one of the brush contacts that the reason this isn't returning to 12 is we have a bad brush contact in the pump. Um, you know, it almost looks like the circuit's still being grounded. Um, I can prove to you that it's not. And what we can do is use a test light, and I'll show you that. Okay, got test light connected to positive. I'm using my pump positive for that. So when my test light, when I find a ground, you see my test light's lighting. Touch on this T-pin where I had low voltage, and you see it's not lighting. Go ahead and crank it. You see the light lights get let off and that would be normal fuel pump operation. Now, turn the key off. Let's wait for a few seconds. When you turn the key back on, we should get a pulse or a prime. You gotta turn the key on. There's your one to two second prime. And the way that this one works, instead of using the relay to do it, it does the pump module to do it. This pump module supplies ground for this fuel pump. So all the controls for the pump are, in fact, from this module. And you see right now, that that test light's not lit, meaning I have no ground. If I connect my voltmeter back up to this, you see we got low voltage on this. That low voltage is not because we have a ground. That low voltage is because we have bad pump contacts. And I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna beat on the tank and I'm gonna show you the spikes in this, which is gonna be the brushes making contact. So I'll show you that. All right, so I got one of my buddies here helping me out. Um, can you go ahead and smack on the tank? And you see as we hit on the tank, definitely have a brush contact problem. All right, cool, thank you. And you see we're back up to near battery voltages, which is what we, we would expect to see with the circuit not being grounded, is high voltage, no ground, no voltage drop through the electric motor. And uh, that's what we got is a bad pump here. We got some bad brushes. And can you crank that one more time? When you do that, this is gonna drop down to near zero. Cool, all right. And you see how it's staying down there. Bad fuel pump for sure. Uh, these electronic systems can be a little bit tricky. And um, you know, it's really the basic same checks, but you have to make sure that this module is doing its job before you put a fuel pump in, in, the, in a car like this. Okay, another check that you'd wanna do is to check this module's ground, and this module gets its ground on this solid black wire. Um, that's important that that circuit's good because all of the current for the fuel pump has to travel out of this module and go somewhere, and it's gonna go to ground on this heavy black wire. So we're gonna wanna check this one while we're cranking, loaded circuit, and look at our voltmeter. Right now with the key on, 
we got zero volts and we're gonna crank it and take a look and see what that looks like cranking loaded circuit okay can you crank that for me okay good so you see we stayed at zero volts loaded circuit that is a good ground for this module okay two more checks I can show you while we're here and these two really aren't aren't necessary being that our fuel pump module is controlling the pump ground as I've shown but we can look at the computer's control signals. These two signals are on off square waves. They're duty cycle controlled. The first one, green and yellow, show you what that looks like on the screen. You can see it is a basically a zero to five volt on off square wave with a 50% duty cycle. And we can take a look at that one uh, percentage wise here. We can come down and look at our duty cycle. Should be 50% looking at that picture. There you see our 50% duty cycle. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. That one stays at 50, key on engine off or cranking. Uh, I'm gonna call these known good because there's nothing wrong with this circuit, just our pump's bad. I believe this one is our feedback. So this one's gonna indicate to the computer if there's a fault electrically with this module. 50% duty cycle steady on this green with the yellow trace. So we'll go to the blue with an orange one now. This is a light blue with an orange trace. And I believe this one's my control signal. This is the one that's gonna tell, the computer's gonna tell this module what to do and how fast to run this pump. And uh, this one you see, key on engine off, I got 25% duty cycle. Go ahead and crank it. And it jumps up to 50, okay let off. And if I remember right, my theory uh, on this car is a 50% duty cycle command on this blue with the yellow trace wire is, is what the computer tells this module to apply a full ground to the pump, which would make sense during cranking. We don't want to limit the speed of the pump. We want it to be full speed, applies a full ground. And so that would be the command to turn this module on and to give the pump a full ground. That uh, What this looks like probably not going to be able to show you on this um, because it's a really fast square wave you see it looks uh, like a bunch of hash on the screen um, um, let's go to my waveform viewer this is a poor scope but it'll give you an idea of, of what kind of signal this looks like all right so this on a five millisecond let's take that up a little bit so you can see it there's 20 millisecond screen, that looks pretty good. And you see it's 25%, go ahead and crank it. You'll see that bottom line, see it increase. Okay, good. So that is your on command to this system to run this fuel pump. Looks like 25% is a command to turn it off. 50% is fully on. And I believe at varying loads, you're gonna have varying duty cycle commands to this uh, based on how fast the computer wants this pump to run at. But that's it, electronic returnless fuel system. Definitely a lot more complicated to, to work with. Um, hopefully I answered all the questions with this. Quick review on this would be, all right, I'm good, Jim, you can, you can do what you're gonna do. Key off? No, leave the key on. Okay. All right, I'll be in Thank you. Time. Quick review is, uh, this is hot, so when you turn the key on, um, first thing that should happen, we should have power that comes in here, and this is from your inertia switch, and that's basically an input to this module. It would also most likely be a power feed uh, that's gonna make this module come to life. If there is no voltage coming in from the inertia switch, this module is gonna be dead and not do anything with the pump, so that has to be there. Um, and of course, if there's no power here, you'd look for an, a tripped inertia switch or a relay problem, fuel pump relay problem. Again, a non-computer controlled relay in this case for this. Everything's done here instead. So we got power here, then we'd have our main ground, the black wire, that's your main power and ground for this module to work. Every module needs a power and a ground to work. Those are your two main ones. As far as the pump goes, with the key on, it looks like we got power all the time on the white with the uh, red tracer. So that means the pump to control it is gonna be a controlled ground. Our controlled ground is on this pink, on this black with a pink. It is a pulse ground, it's a controlled ground, and at different times, the computer's gonna control the pump speed based on 
how much of a ground it applies to this pump. Uh, so it's a pulse ground. During cranking, it should be a full ground um, because we don't want to limit the speed to the on the pump cranking. We want to get our pressure up to speed right away. Um, and I showed you guys that uh, we had a circuit problem that this should be right now on a normal circuit you would have equal voltage here on the white with the red and here on the black with the pink they should be the same voltage with the key on engine off meaning no ground on the pump and what we had was lower voltage and when we cranked it we saw it drop and then it didn't return back to battery voltage again it should return to battery voltage because there is no ground. The reason it's not returning to battery voltage is we have a brush contact in this fuel pump. So that's how the circuit should work. Key on engine off, pump ground, we should have battery voltage. Crank it over on the black pink, it should drop to near ground. If you have that, you got a good power, good ground, you need a fuel pump, uh, you're pretty much done. Now there would be one other variable which would be the wiring from here all the way down to the tank which is only about two or three feet of wire. You would want to double check these two at the pump itself. Um, me being out in the parking lot, I'm not doing that right now. I'll have my uh, garage owner here double check the wiring. We're going to put a fuel pump in this. In the process I'll have him just eyeball these and make sure there's no brakes or anything underneath. But from what I'm seeing, bad pump, you saw we hit on the tank voltage changed on this ground so power ground solid ground and then two control signals this one being the feedback to tell the computer any electrical faults and this one changing duty cycle that's the input from the computer to tell this guy what to do um, hopefully this makes sense definitely a difficult one to talk about but that's it um, this is an electronic returnless fuel pressure system no fuel pressure regulator. Computer uses a fuel pressure sensor up front, and that's one thing I'm not talking about in here is that fuel pressure sensor. That fuel pressure sensor is gonna factor in what duty cycle control signal is sent on this blue with a orange tracer wire. Uh, fuel pressure sensor is not a concern in this case. Our uh, fuel pressure sensor circuit would be checked just like any other pressure sensor, uh, but in this case, again, we're during a cranking condition, full ground, really not concerned about the fuel pressure sensor at this point. So I'm not really gonna show that for this one, but that's it. Electronic returnless fuel system on a Ford.